Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where OP openly supports his son's bully. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash am I the butthole. Am I the butthole for staying neutral in a situation between my son and my daughter and wife? This all started a couple of years ago, and it completely split our family apart. My son Zach, who's 22, has pretty much been estranged from us since he was 18. Adam is the son of good family friends. He and my daughter, Patricia, who's 24, began dating when they were around 19. The problem is that Adam was a bully to my son throughout school, so you can imagine that he did not take it very well. He was furious. However, my daughter refused to budge on this. I tried to stay out of the situation, but my wife took my daughter's side, partially because we're good friends with Adam's parents, but also because she thought that Zach would eventually get over it. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Instead, it made a stark difference in my son's personality. He's become much more aggressive, cold, and disrespectful. He no longer listened to what me or his mother had to say, often using intimidation to get what he wanted. He would also disappear for days at a time without so much as a word. This would more or less carry on until he left for university, after which he probably spent no more than two weeks in total back at home opting instead to stay with friends or whatever girl he was seeing at the time. He's rejected any olive branch that we extend to him. This has completely destroyed our family, and it especially hurts my wife because they were quite close before this happened. The last time we spoke was last year before lockdown. He called me a coward for sitting on the fence. I understand why he feels the way he does, but was I really wrong to stay neutral in this? I didn't feel like it was my place to control my daughter's dating life. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta jump in here and give a, give a butthole score because OP really deserves a butthole score here. Um, okay, so you're not being neutral. If you allow your son's bully into his life, you're not being, oh, I'm neutral. I've got nothing to do with this. I'm not taking anyone's side. No, you're taking the bully's side. And then you have the audacity to criticize your son by saying he's aggressive, cold, and disrespectful. No, it's you, your wife, and his sister who are aggressive, cold, and disrespectful. Like, this guy's been bullying your son for years and you just let it happen because you happen to be friends with the guy's parents? If anything, that should make it easier to stop the bullying because you actually have sway with the parents of the bullies. But instead, you and your wife are just like, oh, he'll get over it soon. OP, you, your wife, and your daughter are mega toxic. I'm giving all three of you 4.5 out of 5 buttholes. Personally, I'm thrilled that your wife is miserable because she 100% deserves it. Then, almost two months later, OP posted an update. I didn't plan on making an update. It was quite clear that we were in the wrong and we accept that. However, my son was informed of the original post by one of his cousins. He got in contact with us because he found it hilarious. My wife managed to convince him to meet up with us and talk. He insisted on me making an update with the takeaways from that conversation, so here goes. Regarding the post, his exact words were, Big props to the people who showed me love, and all the people who called me petty can go F themselves. He said this with the biggest smile on his face. He also found it hilarious how, despite me trying my best to make him look bad, most of the replies were still ripping into me. I'm sure a lot of people are interested in how he's doing now. I am happy to say that he's outgrown his abrasiveness and has become a very confident and intelligent young man. He's very secretive about what he's doing now, but one thing that he's open and proud about is the charity that he runs. He happily went into detail about how he works with disadvantaged children to help them get opportunities, particularly in sports. In regards to his sister and Adam, he seemed completely indifferent to them. He said that he wasn't particularly interested in talking about two losers who no one really likes. It was a long conversation. We talked about a lot but it seemed to end with my son letting us know that while there might be the slightest bit of contact between us, me and my wife will always be on the outside looking in on his life. While this isn't what me and my wife hoped for, we're looking at it as a chance to eventually build our relationship back up. The only silver lining I can take from this story is that, luckily, Zach managed to emerge from the abuse stronger than he was before, and now it seems like he's flourishing in life. I'm guessing that part of the reason for that is because he wisely cut his toxic family out of his life. 
OP, the nice thing for me to say here would be I hope that you and your kid can have a relationship, but I doubt that will happen, and I hope it doesn't happen. You and your wife just don't seem like very good people, and I think your son is better off without you. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash legal advice. My son stole a rare toy from my brother. My brother is refusing to take it back and is threatening to get the police involved. What do I do? Last week, my brother invited me and my family over for dinner. While we were there, my son asked to see my brother's collection of toys and figurines. My brother spent a good deal of money on his collection, and from what I know, it's one of his biggest hobbies. Well, after dinner we left, and everything seemed normal. Well, until yesterday. My brother called me up furious and told me that my little turd stole something from his collection and I had to return it immediately. Honestly, I was upset at this, but if my son had taken something, that was wrong, especially if it was from my own brother. Well, it turns out that my son slipped away during dinner and took a Boba Fett action figure from his collection. My brother confirmed it because he has footage from his porch camera of my son taking it out to our car. I was furious and I took it from him. But here's the problem though. After I confirmed with my brother that it was his, I found out that my son had removed it from its packaging. Apparently, the figure is worth almost $2,000 in its package and almost nothing out of its package. So my brother broke down over the phone and refused to take it back before hanging up. Well, he just called me again today and said that he wanted me to pay for a replacement immediately or he would get the cops involved and sue me. I told him that I would help him pay for one, but not fully, to which he said, not good enough, and hung up. Honestly, what are my options here? I can't afford to pay him back right now. If he does go to the police, will my son get arrested? He's only 15. It was very wrong of him to do, but I think that my brother is overreacting. What can I expect if he does take me to court or call the cops? Then, two days later, OP posted an update. To give some context here, me and my brother have never had a good relationship. We've never seen eye to eye, and after our father's death, he cut contact with me for a good amount of time. We're just too different in some senses. He's a single nerdy guy who has no aspirations for family, while I'm the exact opposite. In these past few years, we've tried to fix this. We tried to work together as adults to bring what little family we have back together. During our time apart, he began collecting old nerdy things, and I won't lie, I never understood the appeal. It's his life though, and he can do what he wants. So when my son stole and damaged his property, I didn't see how it was valuable to him and I discounted that. So when he asked for $2,000 to fix it, I really didn't feel like it was worth it. Was that wrong of me? Maybe. I don't feel bad about defending my son. I only feel bad that I discounted my brother in the process. Sorry about that. Like I said, I don't want sympathy. I only wrote that out to allow myself to be true about the situation. Now back to the update. So after all was said and done, my family had pretty much been thrown into chaos. I had no idea what I was going to do, and after talking with my wife, we decided that we would take many of your advice and have my son pay him back. We had collected all the non-essentials he had and planned to sell them to raise funds. During this time, I got back into contact with my brother and wanted to talk this out to make sure that things didn't end badly. I offered to pay in full. My brother said that he doesn't plan to sue us. Apparently, his renter's insurance is willing to pay him the value that he listed, but he would need to file a police report to get it. At first, we agreed not to go that route and simply pay him the value of it or get a replacement if we could find one cheaper. That was the plan until last night. During the process of taking my son's things away, my wife found a conversation that he had with a friend over the internet. It turns out, my son stole the figurine to sell it. He had googled the figurine while we were at my brother's house and found out how much it was worth and bragged to his friend that he was going to sell it at a pawn shop. He didn't realize that taking it out of the package would ruin it, so he ripped it out to hit it in the car better. Suffice to say, I am not happy about this. I won't elaborate on this much more, but me and my wife have decided that what's best for all of us is that we let him face the consequences for this. My brother is going to file a police report and collect money from insurance. Some might say that this is a bit harsh, but honestly, I think this might be for the best in the end. 
The way that my son actively stole from family to make a profit worries me, and I believe this is the only option that I can live with. I'll stand by my son, but he needs to learn this lesson now before he becomes an adult. OP, um, the whole time I was reading this story, I was picturing your son to be like 7 or 8, but your son is 15? That completely changes the story. 15 is definitely old enough to know better in this situation. I think you made the right call, OP. Your son desperately needs to face consequences here. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash true off my chest. So, I accidentally trained my cat to be an eating disorder support pet. I'm feeling guilty today. I've had this cat for three years now. My eating disorder got significantly worse about two and a half years ago. At first, I didn't even realize what she was doing. I had a problem with purging for a long time. She would get between me and the toilet, demanding attention and fuss while I cried. She would sniff my face and lick it, making it impossible to purge. If I locked her out of the bathroom, she would meow so loudly that I'm sure the neighbors heard. I finally managed to stop purging last year after recovering and relapsing a few times. The lockdown's been really difficult and not being able to go to the gym hasn't helped. A couple of months ago, my cat stopped eating. She got so skinny and she was really underweight. Vets couldn't find anything wrong. I hadn't changed her food. There was no reason for it. I'm not sure how it happened. One day, I decided to have breakfast. So I sat down with my food and I put her bowl next to me and she finally ate. I did the same thing at lunchtime and again, she actually ate. The same the next day and the next. We've been doing this for a while now. She's still underweight, but she's getting there. I wake up at 7 a.m. every day. We have breakfast at 9 a.m. I need those extra hours to build up to breakfast. I slept really badly last night. I woke up at 9.10 and I just couldn't do breakfast. Lunch was at 12, so I would just wait until then to eat. I put down Lily's food next to me. She stared at me, stared at her bowl, stared at me again, and then walked away. I'm heartbroken that I couldn't do it for her. She needed me to eat and I let her down. She finally ate at lunchtime. I had a sandwich. She kept glancing at me, pausing for me to continue before she would eat more. People say that we don't deserve animals, but I don't deserve this cat. She's saving my life, quite literally, and I don't think anyone appreciates or understands how incredible that is. Then, three months later, OP posted an update. Lily and I are both a healthy weight now, finally! Lily was actually cleared at the vets a few weeks ago, but I wanted to wait. Last week was my last eating disorder therapy appointment. So now, we've been cleared. I've also managed to get Lily eating on her own. We both eat regularly, but now she doesn't wait for me to start eating first. I just wanted to update everyone and say thank you so much for your support. It's been more appreciated than you'll ever know. So, um, this is kind of gross. <laughs> But my stepdad's dog loves to eat vomit, people's vomit. He just, she just loves it. So um, in contrast, if you start trying to throw up around that dog, she'll get all excited and she'll run around and whack her tail and just start licking her lips and drooling, thinking, oh boy, meal time. It is disgusting. And to be super, super clear, it's not like anyone in our family intentionally feeds the dog vomit. It's just that if she gets the opportunity to eat some, she will. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash advice. I want to start calling my adoptive mom, mom, instead of her name. I'm a 15-year-old boy. My biological parents put me up for adoption when I was born, so I was always in foster homes until I was 12. I had a teacher, Janice, who's 33, who was my homeroom teacher. Janice found out about me being a foster kid and how I wished I had a family. Janice had also been a foster kid growing up, and so, long story short, she then became my foster mom and adopted me. Janice is the best mom that I could have ever asked for. She's been so unbelievably kind and loving to me, and I absolutely adore her. The problem is that I don't call her mom, I just call her Janice. I want to start calling her mom, but I have no idea how to without making it awkward. Please help me, internet strangers. Then OP posted an update. So, I wasn't expecting this big of a response. Thank you all for responding, and some of the ideas made me really tear up. Anyways, this morning, I went to Janice and I said, Good morning, Mom. 
And she just looked at me and started crying, then came over and hugged me and kissed my forehead. I hugged her back, and she said that I could call her whatever made me comfortable, and that she loves me more than anything. Ah! Ah, this story! Ah! I just replied with, I love you, mom. So, yeah, I hope this update makes someone's day, because it certainly made mine. Have a great day. OP, all I have to say is, Aww! That was our slash best of Redditor updates, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.